and from uh, pictures to lesson through the sketching live the whole process and i think that in that opinion in my opinion you will understand much much better and easier how you can uh, imagine to draw your cars how you can imagine to draw the reflections and therefore present your design correctly all right okay good let's go so i think uh this is first time i show in slides uh uh, like this this way okay so i did not print all right so it should be everything automatic with the software i have to to stream live i hope it's gonna work okay so let's make the transition and yes here we have the first the first car which is of course a porsche everybody like porsche everybody loves porsche okay besides the body is beautiful you know it's really beautiful so i i am now you are watching this uh, this uh, picture and uh, we are going to analyze this photo together because uh, i think that uh, it's uh, through that analysis that we can already start understanding a few things okay so first of all i don't know how to do uh, if I can uh, um, uh, let me see uh, what I would like to do if if there is a sort of a automatic pointer that I can use here but I don't think I can do it okay no no problem no problem so let's look at this picture first of all look at the beautiful reflection on the side view okay so now that you look at that, all that gray, you know, medium tone gray between the wheels, a little bit on the back uh, bumper in the lower part and front bumper lower part, okay? All that gray is the reflection of the ground. You see that all the gray ground that we have in front of the car. Okay, that one, that one is reflecting a little bit darker inside the car in the lower part you see and then as you can see there is another line on top of that that is orangey yellow orange okay then that after that line we can see some green it looks like a grass or a mountain or a, with a tree on on the right okay so there are some objects and then you can see that uh, all the uh, images and objects and nature that is in front of this car that is uh, big, uh, they are kind of close and then they go far, they are completely compressed. You see, it's just a stripe, horizontal, okay? You can see that on top of that line, it's a little bit, uh, that line is not straight, of course, because uh, the grass and the mountain is not straight. But there is a sort of a line that is a little bit trembling, okay, on top. And, uh, and that's the horizon. So that's the reflection. So when we talk about reflection on a car, that's the reflection that is displaying on that car the same thing on the front and back bumper we have the same image that is compressed differently because the section of those shapes are slightly different but you can see that all that stuff is reflection of objects okay the ground maybe a sidewalk the the, the yellowish orangey line that mu uh, must be the, the 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 sidewalk and then we have the grass okay uh, that is going a little bit up with a shadow on the right that maybe it's a tree okay or some objects on the left and everything is compressed then after that you can see that there is a uh, a line a little bit light like a very light blue and going up it's like an airbrush you know it's not an object 
it's a very beautiful uh, degrading blended blue that goes from dark blue in the center and then coming down and going up it becomes light blue in a very shaded and blended way okay this part is the sky and then you can see that on top of the car you know on the rear fender we have a little bit of a reflection okay because the section has changed there and then again we have the sky that is like airbrush it's a very nice deep blue okay deep blue okay so this is the analysis of this car now before we move to the other picture one thing i would like to let you know to tell you is that remember to analyze the main shape in section of this car basically there is a huge cylinder on the side where is the sky is another cylinder that is smaller therefore there is that uh, fillet you know that radius exactly where you have all the dark blue sky, uh, sky concentration of blue that's a radius and then coming up where is the glass area that's another cylinder that is a lot flat compared to the lower cylinder which is the side of this car now i'm telling you this because it's extremely important that's exactly what we are looking for to understand how we have to draw our sections and our reflections okay so Keep that in mind. Now I move to another slide, okay? Another picture. Here we go. Now, here we are in the 50s. The glorious American styling, American design, the super chrome 50s car, beautiful. But here I, I think that it's. Uh... Oops. Yeah, this, this car okay so this one i don't know why it's not stopping i need this one well you know you see all the dark blue the really dark blue on the lower part that's reflection that's the reflection on the left side i go back again sorry I don't know how to stop this, but anyway, I, I think I made a mistake when I made the setup. But anyway, then on top we have the sky, we have the highlight, which is the sun. So remember that type, you know, remember that type of, uh, of uh, section, because you see there is a huge cylinder, many cylinders all together that create that type of reflection okay and uh, then we have the chrome now look at the chrome on the front bumper the lower part look what is the reflection of the grass with the little houses in the back very far you see it's almost the, the, in the middle after there is the sky <clears throat> okay study that remember that because it's not a case that reflection stops there and then it starts the sky because it's given by the shape of that bumper that that shape is another cylinder but in that corner on the left close to the the wheel it is almost spherical so we have a combination of a cylinder and a sphere together that's why the reflection is behaving that way and that's why the sky is doing that nice blue going you know toward the sun that is on the left and becoming almost yellow on the left very pale yellow now i show you ciao soma welcome back now i show you the other one which is beautiful beautiful car also from the 60s late 50s 60s okay 
So this one, I I am waiting. I don't know if you can uh, you can uh, see already. Yes, there we go. There we go. There is a little bit of latency. Therefore, I never know if you if you see the the photo in the same time I'm looking at it. Now look at that those reflections at that sky. You know. Now you are telling me, yeah, Luciano, but where is the sky? I see, I don't see any blue. Be careful. Be careful because on the fenders of the wheels that we see you can perceive a little bit of violet in that red in the sky tone on the right side before it becomes kind of light it blends into a light line it looks like an airbrush you know it, 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 that color it's not a warm color it's a cold color then we have the reflection all that the red band they go from the back tail light to the front fender of the front wheel. You see? That's the reflection. That's exactly the ground. A little bit like the Porsche image. Then when we move up, we go onto the fenders next uh, between the, the glass door. Okay? Now look at the angle of that glass door. You see the angle of the section. You can see it uh, from the vertical line of, uh, of the, the window. It's very inclinated. And therefore, it's pointing directly to the sky. So that's why we have no reflection there. We have a little bit of sky tone where is uh, the light area of the sky, you know. I think that here we are, uh, I would say, around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So the, the sun is still very, very high in the sky. Okay? And we have a little bit of transparency. Then when we are moving on, on top of the car, starting from the back tail, you see there is a beautiful reflection that has a triangular sort of a shape. Then you have some highlights. And then the other side of the fender has uh, it's blending the red of the sky, the reddish violet. It's blending, blending into a very strong yellow. The reason is very simple. Because that's where the sun is. Ciao, Paul. Ciao. Welcome back from India. So you have to understand that we have here a good example of warm and cool. On the left we have the warm, because the sun is on the left. And on the right we have only cool colors, because the sun is not there. Now look at the shadow on the ground, the shadow of the car. Where we have the shadow of the car between the two wheels, it's a very cool gray, I would say number six, but when we are out of the dead shadow, look, for example, on the left, on the ground, where you have, a, a, you know, the gas uh, exhausting pipe, you see in the back. Look on the ground. The gray is not anymore a cool gray. It's a warm gray with a lots of yellow reflection, yellow light, because that's where the sun is hitting the ground. That analysis is very important because there you see when we are in shadow, no sun, it's warm, it's cool, sorry, it's cold, it's cool color. When we are on surfaces that are touched by the sun, you see the yellow. So you have to learn how to make that analysis before you start thinking of putting reflection on your cars because that will tell you exactly how you have to behave when you have your, I don't know, your perspective sketch and then you decide where is the light, where is the shadow and therefore where to put the warm and the cool lights and reflections. Now, the last thing I would like to tell you is the top of that car. Now, look at the, the back glass, the top. It's very yellowish. There is a lot of sun hitting that surface. However, 
when the surface turns on the other side, on the right, it becomes another cylinder that is facing the cold part of this environment. And therefore, there is no more sun there. And that's why it's dark. And that's why there is a little bit of transparency. You see the same thing on top of the hood of the car. All the sky, the sky concentration on, on the front fenders. Look. Look. On top of the, the fenders, on this beautiful hot dog style uh, <laughs> of, uh, you know, of, of cylinder, <clears throat> you have in the center that beautiful red. That then it's blending on the left, in the front, and on the right to a yellowish, sunny light. Okay, so here, this picture, and also the other one, you know, like the Porsche, we have a very good example of what we do on our sketches, at least what I do on my sketches when I draw. And when I decide to use colors and how I manage colors. So you have to look at the shadow. Where is the shadow? Here the sun, of course, you know, it's uh, the light. It's uh, right on, I would say, almost on top of the car. You know, on the Porsche, we are almost at, uh, I would say, 12 o'clock. Maybe 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Look at the shadow. It's straight under the car. You see? Now, if we look at this other picture, the American beautiful car, here we are maybe uh, 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon with the sun that is on the left. And you will see this, you know. So, look at that shadow. The shadow is shifted on the right. It goes a little bit under the car. You see? Ciao, Michel. No, don't worry. I, I just started using those pictures, Michel, because I wanted to explain the first part of reflections by looking at pictures, studying the reality, so that, uh, so that uh, you guys can understand the principles of this theory of reflections. And after that, I will, uh, I will do on, on, on paper, okay? I will sketch for you. And I will explain everything again. So look at that side view. All that dark, ultra dark blue on the side. That one is reflection. There must be a lot of trees on the left that we don't see in the picture. And, 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 and you know, they are all uh, reflecting in, uh, uh, on, on that side view. Then you have uh, the sky tone. It's the dark top blue that is blending very gently, you know, to a very light blue until it touching, is touching the sun. And you see the highlights on the hood, that's the sun. So you can understand even the angle of the light, you know. And that's why the shadow on the ground is like that. Now, once again, let's see the, the beautiful red car, okay. Because there, there are also you understand where is the sun so where is the light source thank you thank you roberto grazie so as you can see i again look at the shadow look at the lines projecting lines of the shadow where is the sun by the sun we are at five o'clock in the afternoon here i would say between five and six you know when the sun is starting to do sunset coming down in fact, you can see the highlights on the, on the back glass on the left, very strong on the left side, not on the right side, and not on the top. This means that the sun is low. And as I was explaining, Michel, on this, on this picture, on the right, you have a cool, cool light. There's a little bit of violet in there. That is the sky tone. When a car is very red, we will never see really blue sky on a red. Because the color of the car will affect the color reflecting into the car. 
That's why you see violet, because blue and red together, they give a sort of a violet color. On the left, you have the yellow of the sun for five o'clock in the afternoon. So it's not yet orange, but the red of the car makes the reflection in the warmer area. So on the left side, a little bit orangey because it's the red of the car. Okay. All right. So let's come back here. It's kind of difficult to explain without you see me with my hands trying to to say look here look there but i think that this first analysis okay it was okay you know i i hope you guys understood all right so let me know let me know if you've got the point so far that's very theory theoretical it's just to understand how designers how i did at school in school how i learned in school because that's exactly what my teachers taught me okay so it's important that you understand how to analyze those pictures and i really hope that uh, from today on when you look at your beautiful uh, car magazine with beautiful cars you know pictures uh, trying to check out uh, the latest uh, ford uh, porsche or ferrari that you look at this too that you pay attention to what's happening in terms of reflections, what's happening in terms of uh, uh, sky tone, what's happening in terms of the uh, highlights. Okay? All right. Now, I will change camera. I will use the top one and the front one. And we will have a little session during which I will explain to you this theory sketchy. And that will help you to understand even more, I hope. Okay, so let me first of all move the camera that is here. And let me know if you see really well because I put my telephone because it's in 4K. So you should have a much better, a much better um, <coughs> quality. Okay, now let me fix the camera correctly all right a little bit uh, like this okay and i i make the transition there we go okay i think it's clear Mr. basically the reflection must follow the shape of the car right yes it must follow the shape of the car but at the same time i will uh, show you now what i call what i call be careful because you're gonna have fun now the war between reflections versus sky tone that we call in a, te a technical terminology we call it this one it's called the core Okay, so remember, I will use this term, the core, because here there is a little history that I have to tell you. You know, I'm up here. And you're gonna laugh now. You have to know the reflection, reflection, the reflection, okay, my little friend, is stupid. He's really stupid. And the smart ass is the sky, the core. They play every time there is a surface, every time we make a car, every time we make a sketch, they play. But they don't play together. They play one against each other. And I'll show you. So let's make a simple cylinder. Okay? Before we talk a lot about cylinder, because cylinder it's you know the side of every car there are many cylinders but we're always talking about cylinders so all reflections go onto a cylinder so now this is a small cylinder you see small cylinder so when the imagine this cylinder it's a chrome so 
it will reflect what it's in the front and in the back. Okay, so you have to imagine that in our scenario, okay, we have here on this side, we have buildings, we have trees, okay, we have people, okay, maybe we have a little car here, park. There are things happening here. And those things are reflecting there into the cylinder. Then, of course, because we are on this earth, we have the sky here on top coming down okay the sky is blue okay if it's a beautiful day sunny day okay it will be blue so we have this shape now what, what happens the first thing that happens very simple the reflections is there it says hey, 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 hey there is a shape there i'm gonna get my place i'm gonna go to the shape and it goes there So he is there. That's reflection. However, the reflections, when he gets to this point, he says, oh, you know what? I stop here. And I tell the reflection, well, why do you stop in there? You have the whole surface. Just take the whole surface. Look how beautiful. He said, no, you know, I arrived here. Here is turning. This is the turning point. I don't see on the other side. I'm scared. I stop. Oh, come on. You cannot stop now. You're just 50%. You're just halfway. No, 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 no. Don't force me. I stop here. So basically, what happens? If this is the section of our cylinder, we are watching the cylinder from here, the reflection, okay, of the things that are here or here, it goes until this point. And then there it stops. Because he's scared. He doesn't see what's on the other side and it stops. In this moment that it decides to stop, it's all happy. Uh, here we are, I'm my my reflection i'm here I, I can do everything i want in this area it's beautiful i am really well then the sky wakes up and says hey what the hell are you doing take the place and he says no 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 because i'm scared because you are stupid i take that place so the sky goes and takes the remaining part this part and the sky that feels like uh, I am the hero, you know, I'm going to show you. You are a little brat, you're scared, I'm going to take all that place, it's all for me. So the sky goes exactly on that radius and it starts taking the place. However, the sky also has his little fears, it doesn't say. But he has some little psychological problems too. And he didn't solve those problems. So what does he do? The sky goes and then when he gets close to the reflection, he says, you know what? I'm quite happy. But now I, I cool off. I don't go all the way. I, I stay there. So the reflection says, you see, you tell me that I, I am scared, I'm a little kid, but look at you, you're doing exactly the same thing. I oh, know it's not the same thing. I have a big place, look, and I'm more beautiful than you. Look how beautiful, blended I am. Look all the tone values of my blue. You know, and look how beautifully I go into the yellow of the sun. The sun! So the sun is here, and it says, you guys, you know what? You say that you are scared to go over there. You are saying, Mr. Sky, that you are very happy with your blending, okay, with your little story, I don't care. You guys are leaving a place empty. I'm gonna take it. So the, the, the sun, it goes there. And it says, that's my place. 
with this light. So that's how those three elements interact on a surface. It's a little battle. In reality, at the end, they all win because each one of them has a little own part. But one thing for sure, you have to remember that this, the reflection will never follow a surface that is changing. So if there is a uh, okay, I, say, I, I take I take this this card. If the the reflection here, you see, it's there. Here there is already a change because the fender in this area it's coming out. Then the reflection, what does it do? It stops there in the fillet and comes back in around that fillet. It doesn't go onto the, the fender. You see? Look, you can see there. You see? It goes there and then it comes back. Because this is a new surface with a fillet. It's scared. It just can't do it. It can help. And then in the back on top, we have a little bit of what's reflecting from the back okay just a little now another thing that you have to consider is that the reflection i will show you is always shading i will tell you why it goes from dark to lighter So you see, it's dark up here, next to the sun, to the light, it's really dark. Then when it comes down, it becomes a little bit lighter, and light, just a little bit, you know, not too much. So that's also another property and of, of, of the reflection. The sky tone, he has a similar behavior. It's very dark in the center. And then it becomes really ultra light. You see? It is the combination of this that makes that surface a reflecting surface. Okay? That's very important that you understand also. And to make sure that uh, this is a real nice reflecting reflection, a reflecting surface, remember also another thing that the value, be careful, the value of this color here, the darkest spot, I would say that here, looking at it, this is a, a value number. 10, okay, here, up here, 10 means uh, the, 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 the scale of the grays, okay, from 0 to 10, before black, so when I say a value 10, means really dark, you can have a red, number 10, you can have a yellow, number 10, okay, according to each color, there is always a tone value, from 0 to to 10 all right so in this case my indigo blue it's a value 10 up there here will be probably i don't know value 7 down here you understand how you can uh, judge that blending that shading now to make sure that this surface it really shows that it's turning and is reflecting the core, the darkest spot of the core of the sky, it has to be the same value of the reflection, the darkest spot of the reflection, the same one. So in this area, it must be value number 10. And I'm going to do it now.
and then I blend. We have to blend because we don't want a line, we want a core. Remember the picture, you know, the red car, how beautiful it was on the fender, that dark red going to the yellow. It was not a line, it was a shading, a blending of a nice surface. And if you do this well, it shows the roundness of the surface. That's why. It's important. Okay, so now I do a little bit of uh, outline there. Of course, the outline follows the same rule. You see? Now it starts feeling like chrome. Is it? All right, so. Now, because the sun is here, means that uh, the sun is on this side. So that's the direction, okay, of the light. A little bit higher. Therefore, the shadow should be like this. Now, the shadow is important because the shadow shows you the direction of the light. But it shows you also that because now that I put a shadow, this object becomes three-dimensional because it's not flat onto a white paper. There is a shadow, so there is a distance. You know, there is space there. Now, what happens to the shadow? Question. The shadow of a cylinder or a sphere, uh, we will do the sphere after, don't worry. It's a little bit here too. You see, it starts here and then goes underneath it and it's passing on the other side. Why? Because this is round. That's the direction of the light, like that. Therefore, here, the little bit is the shadow of this surface. You see? Here. It's just a little bit there. And then the rest of the shadow is there. Do you understand? Ciao, Pierre. Sorry, I saw just now your, your comment. Do you see? So we have a little bit there. Just a little. But that's very important. Now I'll show you why. So, okay, good. So we have our shadow now set up. Okay? Now, there is one thing you have to know. You have to know that the shadow, every shadow, is dark when it, close, when it is close to the object. And when it moves away, it's a little bit lighter. The reason is very simple. Because it's the atmosphere. It's farther from the object. It's... Uh, getting influenced by the external secondary light that is also in the back. It's not just the sun. So automatically this becomes a little bit lighter. Let's do it. So at the beginning it's dark. And then it becomes light. I mean lighter. You see? You see, now you see that the, the, the cylinder is detached from the ground. Now it's three-dimensional. 
But what happens to this surface? Because the section here, it's like this. It's round, no? But this one is flat, right? So if this one is flat, it's going to be like a mirror, like a simple mirror you have at home. You look in the mirror and you see the same image yourself, okay, in the morning. When you look at yourself, you say, oh, how handsome I am, like how pretty I am this morning. I can go to work now. <laughs> All right, so, first of all, on this surface, we have reflection and sky tone. Same thing. So, the area that is close to the, to the, 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 the side of the sun, the light, the light source, is this one right that part will be a little bit darker basically i'm doing a flat core here we have a core that is round because the section it's cylinder it's a cylinder it's round here it's flat so we have the we have to apply the same rule of a cube okay so let's do it. A little bit darker and then it becomes light. You see how important is blending, shading. It's really important. Because it is thanks to that that you can reach the feeling of the th three dimensional, you know. Look, Charlie Striker, don't worry, keep on watching, and then I, I advise you to go and look at the first part because uh, the first part is uh, also very, very interesting. Okay, all right, so. But what's happening here? We said that this is flat, so it's like a mirror. Now, if it is like a mirror, that must reflect something, for example, what's on the ground. And that's what we do when we sketch a cylinder. Look. You see, I sketched a little part of that uh, of uh, of the shadow reflecting inside in this area. Can you see well? And when I sketch this and I put my shading very dark here, a little bit light there, because that's what's happening here. Dark going to light. So I know it, it looks like uh, something very technical, but believe, believe me, are those details that make of a sketch or a rendering something that becomes beautiful, beautiful to watch. Okay, all right, but there is still another thing we have to do. I have that shadow there. It's very thin, it's not very big, but I have it. So in general, we should start here and make just a black line 
because that's that shadow compressed, the reflection. Here it's the same, same sides like this one, okay? But here no, it's just a line because it's round, therefore it's compressed. You see? Okay, now I will make, so this is a cylinder, all right, to explain the war between uh, reflections, core, and highlights. So already here you have a lot of information. Now I'm, I will go a little bit faster and I will show you what's happening on a different basic shape, the sphere and the conic shape. But before we do that, I will show you one thing. Very often you you uh, you see me talking about the cylinder, the side glass. It's a part of a cylinder. You know the side glass of a of a car. This one or this part. I always say this is a cylinder. That's another cylinder. Look. That's a glass, side glass of a car. When we, when we say, you know, when we say what type of, uh, what, what is the cylinder, I don't understand. With this image, I think you understand. Because when we say it is a cylinder or a part of a cylinder, it means that the glass has the shape of a cylinder that is huge, ultra big. And then we just cut out, you know, we cut the shape of, uh, of, of our glass. That's how we make, uh, uh, for example, an alias modeling on Autodesk, okay? That's how they make the construction of the side cylinders for the cars. All right. What pencil is that? This pencil is Faber-Castell, okay? Faber-Castell indigo blue polychromos i write here farouk that's the best pencil you can buy yeah don't use other pencils because they are not good it's called faber castle polychromos this is uh, my favorite color it's uh indigo oops indigo blue i think 145 wait i take a new one to read the number under 57 number one five five seven okay all right buy those pencils you find them on Amazon, that's where I buy it from. Okay, okay, good, good. It's important that you have fabric casted polychromos because polychromos becomes really, really dark, you see? Other pencils don't, they break, but they don't. Okay, so now, let's... So now I will do, we're going to make, we're going to make the sphere. Okay, so let's say that this potato is a sphere, all right, I make uh, my shadow. You see the shadow direction is that way, the light is that way. So we said, now this is a sphere. So basically sphere means also a lot of the cards from the 50s. You know, remember there are a lot of areas that are very spherical on the front fenders, back fenders, you know, around the lights, the front lights many times. So look. 
this is the line of the reflection. But, as we said, the reflection is scared to go over where it cannot see, so that's the point, according to this section here. And then on the side it comes back. Same thing here. All right. Okay, then on top here, we have very compressed, but really compressed, a little part of the reflection of the mountains, what's on the other side, okay? You see? Michel, what is the name of the extension you plug to your pencil? Uh, Michel, I bought this also from uh, Amazon. Those are uh, uh, pencil support. That's, uh, I wrote in English and, and they came out. But that's very useful so that you, you can use the pencil until ergonomically it's still possible. You know. Okay, so now, if you look at this, we have a reflection, reflection. Reflection, shadow, core. And here we have a second core because it's flat. Here we don't have this situation because it's a ball. Okay, so it's all going all around. Hey, ciao, ciao, how are you? Welcome back. So let's, let's do. First of all, we said the top one in general is kind of really dark. Easy. And now this one, I will go dark here, and coming down will be lighter, okay? I'm going to use the same theory that I used here, the same one. First, because it's a big surface for myself, huh? I just put a base of gray, of very blue, okay? A base. And after, I will work with the tone values to go darker, and keep it like so. So this way, it's, for me, it's easier to control. If you have a different way, use your way, no problem. You see? Now I already have the base. Okay. Now I know that here I must be dark and you know what i think that here maybe i can see i don't know maybe a building maybe a little tree you see and here maybe there is a another building And maybe there is also another little tree there. Here we can put another building. You see? Now I'm starting to put some details to uh, explain better the reflection of the environment we have in front of this. Okay, so now let's do the, 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 the blending. It's big. We so gotta be very careful to do a very nice blending, not to mess it up.
Okay, now I can go darker in this area because that's the reflection area. So I really want to be dark. You see, little by little it's coming out. Okay, now a little bit more because I have to make a very nice blending. It has to be controlled, you know. And now I will show you one thing that I'm doing. Here I'm making the reflection that comes back. You see? You see the reflection comes coming back. Did you plan on doing any lessons in Photoshop? No, Farouk, I don't use Photoshop. Uh, for Photoshop, I suggest you to go and talk to uh, what's his name? Uh, Leandro Trovati from Brazil or Berk Kaplan. Okay, Berk also is doing an excellent job on, on Photoshop online. Berk Kaplan or Leandro Trovati. Okay, go uh, and you will be very happy because they, they are really they really know how to use Photoshop. I am uh, the old passion because I am it's not the old fashioned. I am uh, concentrated on the basics of drawings for people that have to learn how to sketch. Because a lot of people, when they want to learn how to sketch, they want to go right away on Photoshop, Procreate, and they make lots of mistakes. And then that those mistakes, even if they become very good in Photoshop, those mistakes remain in every illustration, in every sketch, in everything they do on Photoshop. The best way not to have that, that problem is to learn first this and after go to Photoshop. All right, so. Perfect. Now let's say that we have, you know, our reflection. You never use it at your job at all. No, no, not me. I have the designers that they do that. Not me. As I said before, I'm, I'm in management. I used to, uh, I have uh, some uh, videos uh, that I that I made uh, with Procreate. I did Procreate. And there are some videos here, you can go and check it out if you want. Okay? But I got tired. I, I don't get ex too excited about that. So I, I, I stopped. All right, so now we have to put the core. Okay? Now it's the time of this stuff. It's the sky tone. The sky is coming, saying, hey, you leave me all that place, I'm getting it. And that then that's what happens. Look.
So I'm, I'm really starting to get that uh, core darker, okay? And then, of course, I have to blend it in a way that looks spherical, unless it's going to be a mess. Takes a little bit of time, of course. Then you have to look at it, you have to judge, you know, if it's good, bad, if you have to fix something, you know. Of course, you know, you have to have a uh, critical eye so that you, you know how to manage, you know, to keep control of what you're doing. Sphere is the most complicated one to do of the basic shapes. Because you have to give that roundness feeling. And that's given only by how well or bad you work with your, uh, you know, with your shading. Well, I think that's not bad. Let me see. Maybe a little bit more here. And a little bit darker there. You know, at the end, it's like artistic drawing. You know, it's like uh, fine art. Why not? Okay, that's the sphere. What do you think? Look! Does it look like a sphere? Now what I will do, we will take care about the shadow. Because of course, also here, the shadow is going to do something with the sphere. Of course. So let's do the shadow. Fix a little bit the lines. So the shadow is a, a, it's an ellipse because that's a sphere. So a sphere in perspective because of the projections becomes, you know, yeah, that's a potato sphere. It becomes uh, an ellipse. And of course, also this one, like the other shadow, it's very dark, close to the object. And then it becomes lighter when it goes far from the object. Let me fix that line. Echo. Not bad. Look. Now there is another thing we have to do. This part, just like here and like here, it's reflecting into the shape of our sphere. 
So how are we gonna do that? Well, it's gonna be like this. You see? This one, it's this one. There. And now the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make a shading a little bit darker in this area because it's the shadow in the shadow. You see, it's the shadow of the sphere onto the ground, and then there's the shadow of the, the sphere projected. Ciao, Amal. Welcome back. All right. So that's the sphere. Now, as you can see, Sphere and cylinder, you see, they are following the same rules. Okay, guys, I'm going to drink some water. Okay, if you would like to offer me a coffee for this beautiful lesson, please, it's the moment. Super sticker, super chat, or whatever you want to click. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to drink some water. I'll be back because we have to move now onto the conic shape. And after we'll sketch a car. Okay, here I am. <clears throat> All right, now we have to do the last one we will do before we sketch a car. We're going to make a conic shape. Okay. Okay, Farouk, don't worry, you can always keep on watching this video tomorrow, you go exactly where you lost, uh, and then you, you continue, okay? Don't worry. Thank you, thank you for being with us. So, I will be a little bit faster with this one, okay? So we have a conic shape. We are watching the cone, the cone almost like a tip up, a little bit of tip up. Okay, top view, and uh, and that's what we what we gonna. Okay. So this is the direction of the light. Okay. And that's our shadow. Shadow, conic shape. Now, this is the reflection on the left side. And now we're going to make a reflection will be a little bit smaller on the right side. You see? Which is exactly what we did here. This side, that side. 
what we did here this side and that side for the conic shape it's this part and this part and of course because of the shape of the cone here it's just one point okay but here no we have that side and that side okay it's wide don't forget this because it's very important okay so let's do it Now, look what I'm doing. I am making the shading, the blending exactly like I did here, like I did here. You see? And I will do the same thing here. All right, so now what is left is the sky tone. Now I'm gonna put the sky tone. So I'm going darker in the core, so in the center, okay? I have to go really dark there. So I'm, I'm trying my best to match that value number 10. And then I blend. Same thing here. You see? So, this is our conic shape. Now I'll do the shadow. We said that when we are close to the object is dark and then becomes a little bit lighter going far from the object. All right, so we have 
now the shadow. The last thing I will do is the reflection of this shadow onto the, uh, the, the lower part. And because this is a surface that is inclinated, it's don't, so it's facing that part and not facing down, what we, this part will be shown just a little bit in this area. Like this. Little detail, oops, little detail. All right, so first of all, so far, so good. Did you get everything? Are you, are you okay? Do you have a headache? <laughs> I don't have an headache yet, but maybe we'll arrive after. So look, we did everything here. We only missing the cube, but the cube is so easy. So I won't do the cube tonight. I will do the cube another time, okay? So those are the basic shapes. And now there is another thing that I have to show you that is very important. Remember about the side glass? Now I will show you where we find our windshield. That's the windshield. You see? Now look at that shape because now that you look, that's exactly a part of a windshield, which is a, a part of a huge conic shape. You understand why when I do my sketches, I put the reflection on the left, I put the highlight there, and then I blend the core, okay, the sky tone, from right to left. Because that's what happens to the main shape. Easy. All right, so write a comment. If you want to write a comment, please do. Now I'm going to sketch a car. What a lesson today, huh? I'm sweating. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to make first a side view. Very simple, okay. I'm not gonna waste. To, uh, I'm gonna. I'm not going to work a lot on the on the sketch, okay. Roberto, the way you blend tones using only pens, great skill. Uh, thank you, Roberto. Grazie, grazie mille. So, Okay, so I'm making just a basic shape, okay? I put the shadow area. Okay, so Thank you, Michel. Merci. I have to change pencil because that one it's finished. Brand new one. So now, before I put the, the lines of the reflection, we have to think what we are doing. So I have to think what I want to do. Now, here, this part, the top part, is just part of a cylinder, okay? So, that's a section. So, if I make the section of this part, I know that I have 
I have my glass, okay, like that, with the radius there. Then I have a, a shoulder. So let me put that shoulder, that line, that goes with this, okay. And then I want to have a pool of light here, because I like that. So now let's let's see the section because I have in my mind, but I want to show it to you because that's the best way for you to understand. So my shoulder, the cylinder, then I have this part and this part. So you see, this is the section of the car. Now, according to that section, I will do the shading, and it comes from all those things we did together. Okay? So, first of all, the reflection on the glass. And we said that the reflection doesn't fall all the way because it's stupid. Now, my reflection is ending there because this part here, it's the windshield, which is a part of a conic shape. Therefore, means that from here to here, the surface is turning. And therefore, the reflection stops before. It doesn't go. And here in the back, we have a big cylinder. This one, look, huge cylinder that makes the glass. So, the reflection on the windshield from a side view it's this one. Look. That one. Now, to understand why I sketch it like that, very simple. There you go. Triangular. I'm not facing it like that. I'm watching it from side. So that's what I see. You see? Easy. And this is my reflection on the side glass, which is this one. You see? Now, there is one thing you have to understand. Here, the line is straight because this is cylinder, is extruded, okay? So it's, it's, uh, it's straight, in top view it's straight. However, when we do cars, this part, it's a little bit rounded in the front and in the back. It's a real cylinder there. But after, from here to here, it's taping in a little bit. And here too, a little bit. So it is a cylinder that is made of two semi-spherical parts. And that's why the line comes down. And here too a little bit, you see? because they start behaving like the sphere. So you have to put those concepts together in your, in your head. All right? Okay, let's make that reflection.
And as you can see, I'm doing exactly the same thing I did on the cylinder in terms of shading. There will be only a difference here that I will have some transparency blue because this is a glass. But the reflection are the same. And here too. You see? Now I will put the core. And the core, it's going to be exactly like in this situation. Or this situation. Or this situation. You see? Okay, so let's do the core. The core is very dark in the middle of its core and then it blends to the white, we said, and we did. You see how it feels that it's really turning this. Look. Not bad. All right, now we have the front hood. The front part I put just a little radius there not to leave by everything very pointy it's not very nice Okay, now let's do this. Now I'm doing the lines like that because it's coming up. Therefore, the reflection comes down. It doesn't go up, comes down. This part, as you can see, it's negative, therefore it's in shadow. Like also the back. So, I'll just make it dark. You see? Now, what, what, what did I do here? This is the bumper area that's coming up, coming out a little bit. So it's creating a, a light point here. The section here is down, out, down. Okay? A lot of cars are, like, are, like, are done like that. And here I'm making reflections. You see? There. The zigzag reflection.
Then we have a wheel. And then when I make the shadow, it's going to be really dark down here. Also a little bit there. And then when I come to the front, it's going to be a little bit lighter, just a little bit. Look, same thing here. Dark and then light. Fading into light. You see? Oops, like that. Any comment? Does it make sense to you this now that after we explain the basic shapes? I hope so. Then, of course, we can have a little bit of fun with graphics on the wheels. Making sections that are really funky. Some are in shadow, some are not. Now, I'm doing this according to the light, huh? what is in shadow and what is not in shadow. You see, it looks nice. Okay, let's do the last one here. Okay, so let's see. You know, I'm going to play a little bit with geometrical shapes, which can be fun. Okay, the last thing we want to do is just to give a little bit of shading in the in the lower part here too, and then a little bit of core on the hood. Let's not forget the hood. Underneath here.
you see put a little bit of the lights here just a little indication we can put a also a little indication here okay Robert, absolutely, Luciano. Now I have things clear. Referring to reflection core, definitely a great tutorial. Thank you very much, Robert. I'm very happy. If you if you understand the the, the, the sequence, I'm really really happy, really, because uh, sometimes it's complicated, you know, to explain. Sometimes it's complicated. So let's do this. You see, we put the, the repartition of uh, of uh, proportions in terms of the 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 doors. So I can put now my B pillar, my C pillar, And then there is also a D pillar, which is this one that we didn't do yet. I'm going to do it now. Okay, we can put a little bit of steering wheel here. You see, a little bit of transparency at the Hartsfield, the section on the bottom catching light, would that be done in sky tone, like the top of the car? Yes, this one, yes. Yeah. Of course, that's why I didn't touch it. Good question. Bravo. Let me put a little bit of wheel well to be more credible. You know, I'm a, I'm a manager. <laughs> I'm not uh, a student. Just a little bit, so that you get a, a feeling of rea realism, you know. So now I invite you, of course, to try, you know, try on, you, on your own at home. Let's see, you know, I think that uh, can, be, can be interesting for you to try, you know. Maybe you can look at, you can watch some parts of this video from tomorrow again in some in areas where you probably are a little bit confused. And, and try to replicate. Now, I show you again the slides, okay? The slides of the three cars, because in my opinion, after all we did together, you are going to understand even better those pictures, okay? So let's do it. Okay, so look at, look at the shape, look at the core, look at the highlights, the shadow, the reflections, the warm part where there is a strong sunny day light and the other part you welcome eddie you welcome and you will see i'm sure that now you recognize the things that i have done okay next you know this one typical porsche beautiful porsche great reflections it's very simple and you can see now the, the cylinder you can you can see this that cylinder now you see and then 
the American car, which has completely different type of, uh, of shapes. But again, look how many cylinders this car has, you know, to make the design, the sections, the volume, the surfaces that this beautiful car has. L look at that, uh, at that bumper, you know, the bumper is exactly the sphere that we did. Okay, good. So now I am going to change camera. All right. Here I am. So we did a lot of things today. Huh? I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> so the most important thing we talked, what we introduced our talk with uh, the war between reflections, core, and then also the highlights. And we explained how stupid all three they are. But anyway, it's also the magic that those three entities, you know, give us on our objects, our cars, our shapes. And then we made the theoretical, you know, the theoretical demo on the basic shape so we did uh, our cylinder explaining why that cylinder has reflections core shading highlights in that way and then we made also the conic shape and we explained that uh, the windshield is a part of a huge conic shape therefore reflections shading core as to follow the rules of a conic shape. And then we made also the sphere to see how the reflection on the sphere, which is all around shape, you know, they behave. So I think that this is a full package, you know, full package lesson. In general, this lesson I do in two lessons. So today I did in one lesson, all right? Because what is missing here is that you are not with me, therefore I should see you, how you're making your cylinder, how you're making your uh, conic shape, how you're making your sphere, you know, to check out and make correction. Of course, this is not possible, unless you are one of my online students. In that case, it is possible. Anyway, thank you very much. I hope that you like this live stream i also also hope that you like the introduction that of course tomorrow i'm going to erase yeah because there is a one hour of dancing music before you know before it starts therefore that part will be erased tomorrow when uh, when uh, the video will be uh, transferred on by on the server of youtube thank you michelle Thank you. I really hope that this can help really everybody to place reflects on shading and highlights a little bit better. But don't worry, next time, okay, I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to make a, a nice sketch in color and we'll go through all this directly on a sketch with markers, highlights and everything, okay? All right, so now what uh, I have to do? I had to click this. Eddie, well, well done as always. Thank you very much. So, one, two, three. Grazie mille and see you next, next Friday. Ciao.